Welcome back to 10 Minute Radiology Case Reviews with Dr. Benjamin W. Strong. Welcome to the VRAD Trauma CT Lecture on Injuries at the Aortic Isthmus. This is your host, Dr. Benjamin Strong. We'll be reviewing five cases of aortic laceration at the isthmus, starting first with static CT images on which findings will be designated by colored arrow and listed in color matching text. That will be followed by a CINE review with similar annotations. Our first case is of an aortic laceration at the aortic isthmus. This is the most common site for aortic lacerations. You see here an irregular defect in the anterior aspect of the descending thoracic aorta at its junction with the posterior aortic arch. There is little or no mediastinal fluid. The presence of mediastinal fluid can be a useful indicator of a vascular injury, but its absence cannot be used to exclude a vascular injury. We have additional diagnostic help here in the spleen where you see wedge-shaped, well-circumscribed peripheral hypodensities consistent with thromboembolic phenomena and suggesting the presence of a proximal vessel injury. Here on the sagittal, you can appreciate the intimal flap and a small pseudoaneurysm. Here's the irregular defect on axial and another view of the splenic hypodensities. Note the lack of perisplenic fluid. The sagittal cine gives a nice view of the intimal flap and small pseudoaneurysm. This patient was scanned a week later and you can see a much smoother, most likely intimalized pseudoaneurysm, a resolution of the splenic hypodensities and again the pseudoaneurysm on the sagittal and 3D. And there it is on axial images and sagittal. So that is an aortic laceration at the aortic isthmus with later intimalization. Our next case is an aortic transection with avulsion of the right renal artery. In these transections, there will be both proximal and distal aortic defects visualized as the torn portions of the aorta pull apart. So here we see mediastinal fluid and the proximal aortic defect and lower down mediastinal fluid and the distal aortic defect. This patient also has a markedly hypodense right kidney. You can see the asymmetry compared to the left nephrogram, uh, clearly indicating that this kidney has lost arterial flow. The central serpiginous densities you see in the right kidney are right renal venous backflow. So here are the proximal and distal defects in the aorta with an intervening segment of dilation that's bound by adventitia. And here is venous backflow, first in the adrenal vein and now in the renal vein. And again, a markedly asymmetric nephrogram indicating the loss of arterial flow to the right kidney. The three-dimensional view is helpful here to visualize the transection with the retraction of the torn ends of the aorta and an intervening segment of pseudoaneurysm bound by adventitia. Here's a magnified view and the sagittal. Very helpful in visualizing an aortic transection. So this was an aortic transection with avulsion of the right renal artery. Our next case is an aortic laceration with dissection of the renal artery. Here again you see the proximal defect and the distal defect in the aorta. This is a high grade laceration. I would call it almost a near transection and we'll appreciate that on the sagittals. Helpful finding here is thickening of the aortic wall or the presence of periaortic fluid. People argue about which this is. In either case, it's a helpful indicator of the presence of a vascular injury. Here you see wedge-shaped peripheral cortical hypodensities, again, consistent with thromboembolic phenomena, but they're regional 
posterior and superior in this single right kidney. Here you see stranding in the right renal hilum and a small segment of irregular, indistinct right renal artery consistent with a dissection. Here on the sagittal you can see the proximal and distal aortic defects. And here they are on the axial cine. Intervening segment of dilation and significant mediastinal fluid. And here the thickening of the aortic wall or periaortic fluid. The right kidney again demonstrates peripheral wedge-shaped hypodensities that are regional in distribution and there's significant stranding in the right renal hilum. Lastly we'll see that short segment of indistinct renal artery right there indicating the presence of a focal dissection. Lastly of interest this patient has a pancake adrenal gland indicating a developmentally empty left renal fossa this can be in patients with a single kidney or a pelvic kidney. Given the presence of compensatory hypertrophy of the right kidney, uh, you can correctly surmise that this is, in fact, a single kidney. Lastly, we can appreciate that aortic laceration on the sagittals. You can see it's a near transection, but comes together right there at the lateral wall. So that is an aortic laceration with a focal renal artery dissection. Our next case is an aortic laceration with rupture of the left hemidiaphragm. You can see here the irregular defect in the aorta, and here the herniated stomach lying in the inferior left hemithorax. The spleen has a well-circumscribed peripheral wedge-shaped hypodensity suggesting a thromboembolic event, and there is a defect in the anterior aspect of the left hemidiaphragm, which we'll see better on other views. The kidneys demonstrate the now familiar wedge-shaped cortical hypodensities, again consistent with a proximal vascular injury and thromboembolism. There on the sagittal, the intimal flap and pseudoaneurysm are more than obvious. Here on the coronal, the intimal flap and the herniated colon and stomach and the free edge of the torn left hemidiaphragm. A cut further back shows herniated stomach and spleen. The spleen is rotated and almost appears inverted. It lies above the torn edge of the hemidiaphragm. Another view of the cortical hypodensities in the kidneys and again the free edge of the torn diaphragm. There is the aortic laceration. And here the herniated stomach, colon, spleen, and the diaphragmatic defect here at the very end of that image set. Again, the sagittals nicely show the intimal flap and pseudoaneurysm. The coronal is the intimal flap. The herniated stomach, colon, and spleen and the torn free edge of the left hemidiaphragm. So that is a case of aortic laceration with diaphragm rupture. Our last case is an aortic laceration with mesenteric vessel injury and hemorrhage. You can see this aortic laceration is very subtle on the axials. There is no mediastinal fluid and there is a linear filling defect within the lumen. You do have the periaortic fluid or wall thickening as an indicator of the presence of a vascular injury. In the abdomen, you can see small contrast collections consistent with pseudoaneurysms or extravasation, and there is adjacent pneumatosis of the terminal ilium consistent with ischemic bowel. Here on the sagittal, the aortic pseudoaneurysm and periaortic fluid or mural thickening. 
There are the axials on that aortic laceration. And here you see the mesenteric vessel injury and terminal ileal pneumatosis. On the sagittal, you can clearly see an intimal flap. And that is a case of aortic laceration with associated mesenteric vessel injury and distal small bowel ischemia. And that concludes our lectures of injuries at the aortic isthmus. This is what you saw. Thanks for watching the VRED Trauma CT series. This is Dr. Benjamin Strong, the host of 10-Minute Radiology Reviews. In the course of my career, I have worked as an internist, an emergency room physician, and an MR fellowship trained radiologist. I'm currently the Chief Medical Officer of Virtual Radiologic, or VRAD, the nation's largest and leading teleradiology practice. With over 500 emergency teleradiologists and serving over 2,000 client facilities worldwide, we have access to an extraordinary amount of educational content which you see in these presentations. If you like what you've seen, please feel free to share, comment, subscribe, or for that matter, join the nation's leading teleradiology practice.